For the first time, white people were becoming aware of their whiteness and the systemic ways that white supremacy affects all of us. In this episode, we're tackling white racial identity and why understanding your whiteness is integral to becoming self-aware as a white person. I'm Nicole Ellis, and this is The New Normal. Uh, the new normal is totally insane. Uh, that's from the Washington Post, and she's giving us lessons, uh, me, in uh, how to be white, whiteness, white identity. It's so silly and stupid, but also potentially dangerous, in my opinion. I'd like to bring in Rob Carson. He is the host of What in the World with Rob Carson right here on Newsmax. Welcome to you, sir. And Ellis Hennigan, welcome back. Dow Jones, Market Watch columnist, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, gentlemen, first to you, Rob. Uh, this stuff is um, not going away. It's getting real. It's getting, uh, it's really being shoved down our throats, it seems. Uh, it's a little ridiculous. And by the way, I'm short on time. I got to go to my white accountability group meeting tonight. No, actually, just the opposite. I belong to a group called White Guys Who Aren't Going to Apologize for Anything Because We Didn't Do Anything Wrong. Uh, honestly, this is absurd. This would be like uh, 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 France apologizing for taking Manon Lescaut, which is where all the cave paintings are, uh, from the Neanderthals, if there are some, you know, some uh, descendants of that, or, or, or Spain apologizing for the conquistadors going to Central and South America for 500 years ago. It's absolute nonsense. Uh, I have nothing to feel guilty about, Greg. You have nothing to feel guilty about. Uh, my relatives came here uh, after the turn of the last century. It was a melting pot. We weren't, most Americans weren't descendants of slave keepers, and we weren't descendants of uh, of the yeah. of the col colonialists. It's ridiculous. Well, Rob, you know what? Uh, you may feel that way. I may feel that way. But a lot of white people are buying this stuff, uh, in including this young woman from Oklahoma, I believe this is our second clip. Take a look, please. I am originally from a smaller town in Oklahoma. Whiteness was the default and whiteness was the comfort. The more you kind of dive into that, the more I'm really realizing how deeply rooted racism is into like my everyday thought process. No matter how much you work at that, there's still even almost more work to be done. Ellis, this was produced by the Washington Post, owned by Amazon. Uh, Jeff Bezos, smart people, you would think. What's your reaction to all this talk? <laughs> Let me put both of your minds to ease, if I can. I, I know a lot of white people, and I don't know any of them who are going to white accountability groups. That's just a that's just a goofy idea. I'm sorry. However, however. We can't get away from the fact that we do still have problems with race in this society. Uh, wealth is distributed ridiculously. Black people still do have a lot of challenges that us white people don't. And we got to be able to talk about it honestly. And it's easy to make fun of some goofy thing like this. But don't use that, guys, as a way to avoid what are really the tough and difficult and, frankly, pretty important issues here. Don't hide behind this stuff. No, I, I just, when you say us white guys, and I hear that a lot from, quite frankly, white guys, like we're all, well, we're all the white. same. Excuse I mean, me, all excuse white, me. You know? We're all, Ellis, Rob, you guys are different. You've had different lives, different challenges. Uh, there are people from all over the economic. What binds us right now is not our white skin, in my opinion. Um, and when I hear that, it makes me kind of upset because there's a trickle down effect. Um, you know, people who are comfortable start to say, oh, I'm a white guy. What do I know? Rob, you know what I mean? I think that there's a because uh, it working class people perhaps are not feeling very good when white guys are putting themselves down. Well, and I'm going to tell you something right now. Until you recognize the decay of uh, what's happening in America's inner cities, started with the uh, the uh, war on poverty with uh, Lyndon Johnson, we will never get past this. As far as uh, income risk distribution, I'm not a billionaire like Oprah Winfrey. There are a lot of people who have been able to be e extremely successful in this country, regardless of their of their skin color. Uh, I don't owe anybody. I grew up as a poor kid on a farm in Iowa. We got free government cheese when I was a child. I was made fun of every day of my life until my freshman year when I beat the crap out of Mike McKee. So honestly, I don't want to hear about victimhood. I'm a generation extra. We were braised to be colorblind. I do not have any uh, any uh, bias, whether it is external or internal. And this is all nonsense. We've got to look at the real problems of the, the country, the decay of the African-American family in inner cities, and the violence, which is 13 times the national murder rate in cities like Chicago. 80% of uh, black families in Minneapolis have fatherless homes. So let's start talking about that 
that before we talk about income inequality, because honestly, that's just buzzwords for covering up societal issues and bad Democrat policy. And you know what? Thank you, Rob. Wow. And <laughs> if there is systemic racism, systemic racism, that's a big term. And I actually heard President Trump, when he was president, acknowledge, yeah, maybe we got a problem there. But that's the system. We're taking individuals in group settings uh, like that person from Oklahoma with their glasses and making her feel responsible for the system. And it's not her fault, Ellis. Well, but you got to face some facts, though. I, I mean, Rob, Rob just told me about how terrible things are for all the black folks that live in the cities. Maybe we ought to accept that reality and try to do something about it. I mean, it is a fact. I know you guys don't want to talk about it. But it is a fact that black people have far less wealth than white people. They have far less education. They have far worse jobs. I mean, those are just realities. And it seems to me if we want to be honest, moral people, we got to try and get our heads around that and try and solve it. Don't just uh, find some stupid person saying something dumb and pretend like that's the whole answer. And you know, Ellis, though, the thing about it is this is not some wacky video that we found in the depths of the Internet. This is the Washington Post. This is a big deal. The government, they're actually doing this. President Trump rejected it. This racial sensitivity training is happening in corporate America and in government. This isn't just some fly-by-night weirdo stuff. This is real. This is happening. And Rob, that's why I'm glad you're saying what you're saying. Honestly, guys, um, uh, you have to address the societal issues that are affecting uh, black people. A lot of this is, and you can just say what you want, I'm a racist, whatever, poor decisions uh, made in their lives. Listen, there are a lot of white people. I got a lot of white in you know, my family. Uh, you know, we've got some, a lot of uh, poverty in my family as well. And it's not because anybody tried to keep them down. It's just they made poor life decisions, just the, the, the way it is. Uh, poor life decisions and poor Democrat policy attempting to make lives better for African-American families like the uh, the, uh, the program uh, uh, Aid for Dependent Children, which effectively destroyed the uh, uh, black family. They had agents who would actually go to black homes to see if the father was there. If the father was there, they lost the money that they were uh, promised from the government. So uh, this is, uh, until we look at the real problems in the African American community, like a 60% abortion rate, like an 80% fatherless home rate, like kids dropping out of schools, like kids joining gangs, like the 13 times the national average murder rate, until we realize that's not Whitey's problem, we won't be able to fix well, it. Well, all right, Ellis, you know what? Barack Obama, <laughs> Barack Obama did talk Sorry. about that. We're not gonna call it Whitey, but Barack Obama Good, did thanks. talk about those issues with the African American family, African American fathers. He said they're AOL, uh, AWOL and MIA. He said that in early 2008, back when he was trying to win us over. And now he doesn't talk about that. He talks all about systemic racism, white supremacy, not what that community can do from within. Clearly, personal responsibility is needs to be part of this conversation. But don't hide from the facts, guys. I mean, it is not true, Rob that uh, all black people are just these lazy, horrible people. The he way didn't you say that. Come on, Ellis, that he didn't say that. That, that, is, a, that is a stereotype that is Nonsense. not an, a an, an appropriate... Me. Seriously, let me finish my sentence, if I might. That is not a stereotype that reflects the reality of life in America. People are poor, they're suffering from that poverty, and we got to try and figure out how we're going to solve that. Don't just point fingers, that doesn't help anything. Well, I'm not I, pointing I, fingers, Rob, I'm ahead. just saying... That, that there are personal decisions you make in your life. Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, I could go on and on. Uh, they made positive decisions in their lives and they were driven. They came from, uh, they lifted themselves out of poverty. And don't ever, ever say that I think black people are lazy. Dear Lord in heaven, there are a lot of uh, white people who make very, very bad decisions and, may, and maybe they are lazy. But uh, don't, don't stereotype me like that. I really, I've been working with inner city kids for the last 30 years, fostering and adopting kids and building up kids in inner cities working with black kids to make black lives better. And I don't want to see another generation go down the tubes like the last two have. We're going well, to leave it I'm there. So, uh, I'm Ellis, so fine. happy to hear that, Robin. Do me a favor, if you will. Yes. Try and have yeah. a more broad view about the realities. Don't pretend it's their fault all the time. No, he no, says, no, no. He, he, uh, Ellis, in I fairness, he didn't, he, didn't, yeah, he didn't say any of that. He didn't say it. It's all, it did, he didn't say that. But listen, I, I like you guys. Minutes, I like you nonetheless. Ellis, Ellis Hennigan. Good to see you all. Great writer. Ellis, we'll see you over there at Market Watch. And uh, Rob Carson, your show, by the way, is right here and, on and Newsmax, Saturdays at 9 o'clock, Sundays at 2 o'clock. Many thanks. I'll be right back.
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.